Um, I want to thank everyone for making it to the Summer Opportunities Power uh, presentation tonight. We have Governor Peter Shemlin with us this evening. And I do want to say this is being recorded. So uh, you can access this after if you miss it or if you come a little bit late. Uh, so to start, uh, to introduce Peter Shemlin, um, Peter has been uh, the governor of Vermont for three terms. He served from 2011 to 2017. And while he was a leader on many issues throughout his governorship, one of his top priorities was combating drug abuse. Uh, and in fact, he devoted his entire 2014 State of the State address to the opiate drug uh, crisis. This groundbreaking speech reframed opiate addiction as a medical problem, not a criminal one, and emphasized treatment instead of jail time. Uh, so after six years, he then returned as the co-director of Putney Student Travel. And so I think the question that a lot of us are probably thinking is, uh, why is the former governor involved in the world of student travel? <laughs> well, thanks, Natasha. And thanks for hosting us. Thanks for a -list, to A-List for hosting us. And I'm really delighted to be with you. Yeah, I got that question a lot uh, when I was finishing up my third term as governor. And by the way, I encourage anyone here who's listening, who's going about to go to college and go get a great education, I encourage you to be a governor. It is a great job. You can really make a difference and get things done. But anyway, people often said to me, I served three terms. I chose not to run for a fourth because governors tend to go in do their thing and get out of the way. It's not like the Congress folks who stay down there for a lifetime or whatever. So anyway, when I was finishing up, people always ask you, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? And uh, I said, well, I'm going to uh, go back to Punny Student Travel and continue to devote myself to educating students in the summertime. They're like, what? Like, you know, former governors, they go off and they become college presidents or they run corporations. What, what are you doing? I said, no. I said, you know, I found in public service that incredibly rewarding. It can really make a difference, but it takes years to really make big changes in public policy. And what I loved about being a director at Putney pre-governor was that you can change a kid's life in three or four weeks. And, you know, I know that sounds cliche, but I can't tell you how many times I'd be out speaking somewhere or other as governor and someone come up and grab my back and say, hey, you know, I did the president's program in France. 30 years ago, and it changed my life. I'm now, you know, teaching at Georgetown in the language department. I'm now an ambassador to wherever. I'm now, you know, doing whatever work because of the experience I had. So long and short of it is, I didn't do what governors usually do. I came back to Putney, and I'm really having a great time directing Putney student travel, and we also have New York Times student journeys and, um, and, and National Geographic student answer question I was asked so often, and you just asked Natasha, is I love this work because it really does change kids' lives. A lot of fun. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm excited to jump into it. Um, we're going to start off with Putney's programs, and I just want to say that uh, Putney offers a variety of programs, and um, Peter's going to highlight some of them this evening. Um, but in general, we were, were curious to learn a little bit about what are some of the benefits of attending any of the summer programs that students can attend? Sure. So we have a variety of programs, and we're often asked what the benefit is. In truth and disclosure, the secret to our success is the leaders that we select. You know, we're really good at engaging graduate student age leaders who are friends, mentors, educators, inspiring. And in fairness, Natasha was one of them a few years ago and did a great job leading our Spanish language program in Spain. So I just want to do full disclosure first. Uh, listen, there are a number of benefits to joining a program, whether it's Putney or some other summer program. Uh, the first is that what I always tell parents and students is, listen, what you'd expect is true. You're going to go to a foreign country, whether you're doing community service, whether you're in a cultural exploration program, a language program, a pre-college enrichment program, you're going to be exposed to a culture that's so different from what you're used to that it's going to stretch you in ways that allow you to grow and mature and prosper and to, frankly, really change your attitudes about things that you always took for granted sort of in, your, in, your, in, your, in the cocoons that we all live in with, with our families, our schools, and our communities. Uh, so that's one benefit. The second is you tend to learn languages if you choose to learn languages or, or um, make friendships with people that often change your perspective on 
your life going forward. And I think the third one, and perhaps the biggest one, but the one that sounds a little corny when I tell students this in advance of joining a Putney program is you will make, you'll build relationships that are closer than any relationship that you've had in the past. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, and I went on a Putney program, by the way, when, when I was in high school, I'm still in touch with the kids that I went to France with in 1972. But what happens is, you know, you don't have your parents, you don't have the cocoon and the safety of your community, you don't have the, everything that you know, you know, everyone, we all have our friends in school, and we have the people we spend the most time with, and then we have people we hang out with a little bit, and then we have people that we just don't pay much attention to at all. In a Putney program, we select the students really carefully. They can't come from all over the country, a lot of different backgrounds, different interests, and you get there and you're usually without a friend, so you don't know anybody, you're totally vulnerable, you don't have all the security of home. And the result is that you're going through this intensity of experiences together that tends to result in your building closer bonds with each other and with your leaders that are like a family. And I think those relationships and the security of those friendships allow you to dive into a foreign culture in ways that you wouldn't if you were off on your own, kind of being nervous about talking to people and not really getting engaged in that all. So those are some of the benefits. Finally, parents often say to me, well, you know, does this help you get into college? And, you know, what I say to parents is, listen, don't apply to a summer program because you want to get into college apply to a summer program because you want to do that summer program. In other words, if the student isn't excited about it, is not excited about it, it's a really bad idea. Mm -hmm. However, and we'll talk about this maybe a little bit later, but there's no question that the kind of growth that happens on these programs often results in being the subject of a college essay that because it tends to reflect the way you've grown, what you're really about, what really drives you. And students tend to find their passion in these programs, and that tends to be the subject of college essays. Absolutely. And as a former leader, I definitely witnessed all of those benefits firsthand. I'm still in touch with a lot of my students, um, and I know they're in touch with each other as well. Yeah, there is that. Excellent. All right. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about what kinds of programs exist? Sure. So at Putney, we have a variety of categories of programs. And I, I don't want to get to too much into the weeds. Go to our website, goputney.com, and it's, it's all laid out there. But the first category is community service. And this was all founded, by the way, by my parents 68 years ago. Uh, they were teachers and educators. Now, you have to remember, this was pre-airplanes, you know, commercial air travel. And uh, they, as high school teachers, wanted to turn summer vacation into education. My dad had been a World War II veteran, and he had been very much colored like that generation was by his experiences in the war, for, you know, fighting Hitler's troops and just, you know, this kid from, from New Jersey that ends up in the Navy and, and is, you know, battling for the freedom of the, of the free world. Uh, my mom, who's Dutch, grew up in occupied Holland. The, the Germans were occupying Holland during her childhood, and she literally would, you know, have her Jewish friends disappear in the streets that she'd be playing with the morning before. Uh, so they were very much affected by the war. They wanted to make a difference. And they this what was a really pretty crazy idea 68 years ago. Let's send students all over the world. By then, you back then, don't forget, you had to go by ship. It was like 10 days over, 10 days back. Uh, but let's have them go do community service, learn languages, learn about other universities, really get involved with the culture. So the categories are, are as follows and have been for 68 years. Community service. In those programs, you go into a country, you just pick your country. It's a small group, 16 students, two leaders. And there will be three or four projects. You're living in a small village. An example might be Tanzania, where we've been for a number of years now helping to build a school for a community that doesn't have a school. And so, you know, you'll have three or four projects helping to build a school. There's always some construction project. We always have a project that's an enrichment program for kids in the village and arts. It's for like a summer camp, and it's a great way to meet all the kids in the village. Uh, we usually have an agricultural environmental project, and you'll move around, along these projects during your three or four week program, Monday through Friday. So it's groups of four or five or six. Then we have you also do an independent project in the afternoon where you choose some subject that you're really interested in. It might be going to learn about women's health care in the village and how that's dealt with, or to go work with a street vendor who's cooking great food and going and helping them out. Just anything that gets you engaged with people in the community. Uh, 
and then on weekends we take off and like in, in Africa as an example we'll go uh, we, sp we join the Maasai for three days and we move from their nomadic hunting grounds to nomadic hunting grounds we'll spend five days in four-wheel drive vehicles on a safari learning about the uh, the great you know, incredible wildlife and how climate change and poaching is affecting those issues so that's community service. They tend to be three or four weeks. You do great projects during the week. You take off and go off and explore the country during the weekends, then and come back to your village. You make really close bonds with the people in the village, but you're really giving to folks in a really neat way that sort of develops an exchange and friendships that wouldn't otherwise happen. The second group is um, cultural exploration, and those really balance um, a vigorous outdoor activity off the beaten track in the countryside, hiking in the Swiss Alps or skiing the out the, the, in, in New Zealand or uh, going out in the outback of Australia on a, on a boat for six days to study the, the ecology of the reef and some of the challenges being faced there. We balance that with a cultural emphasis in cities and usually a short five-day homestay where you get to live your entire groups in the same village, but you get to live with a a family for five or six days with a brother or sister your age, go to school with them and all that. So that's pretty neat. That's cultural exploration. The third group uh, are um, what we call our pre-college programs. And in those programs, we run them and have for years at Amherst College, UCLA, Oxford University, uh, Florence, Tokyo, uh, Barcelona. So we're all over the world. And students choose a major and a minor. It's all high school students. But we also have a program for middle school students as well, separately, not together with high school students. But you get to really dig into issues that you want to learn more about in these really hands-on seminars. So as an example, if you're doing international relations and politics and you're at Oxford, you'll take the train into London, you'll go to Downing Street, you'll talk to members of parliament, you'll learn all about Brexit, what's working, what's not, why it's such a mess. You know, or if you're, so, so, so you're really able to learn sort of hands-on, it's not school. No exams, no tests, but give you a taste of what college life is all about. And then uh, the other uh, uh, category is language immersion, and that's what Natasha uh, led in Spain. But in those programs, you commit to speaking the language for the summer, even with your fellow students. Our experience is that you don't really develop fluency in a classroom. So we take students, both uh, younger students, seventh, eighth graders, and older students, ninth through 12, and will put you in really amazing situations in France, Spain, Ecuador, uh, Costa Rica, where you'll immerse yourself in a language and learn languages by doing, and uh, they're really extraordinary programs. So the final category is what we call Discover Putney. They're for much younger kids. We've just started them. They're fourth and fifth and sixth graders, and they're really active programs right here in Vermont and New England that sort of give you a taste of all of the categories I've just talked about. So those are the various programs, and they're, they're pretty darn exciting. Yeah, that's something for everyone, certainly. Yeah, we hope. <laughs> Great. And I know that Penny's also recently partnered with National Geographic and the New York Times. Can you right. tell me a little bit more about those partnerships and what they entail? Sure. Yeah, about, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, National Geographic came to us and said, hey, we, we love what you're doing with kids, but we want to take our scientists, our photographers, our explorers, and put them all over the world in areas of the world where National Geographic has been exploring and working for years and use your, you know, your, your method of really getting involved in a local community, not T-O-U-Rs, but really rolling up the sleeves and getting involved. And so really the difference with the National Geographic programs is that one of their scientists, their explorers, their photographers, their experts will join you in addition to your leaders for five or six days of each program. And you'll get state-of-the-art mentoring in mm -hmm. photography, in writing, in science, in exploring, and whatever it is that they're doing. And so we have you choose an on-assignment project. The itineraries are similar to what I just outlined for Putney, but you actually are able to produce work and get critiqued by some of the most successful photographers and explorers and scientists in the world. So it's really exciting stuff. That's called National Geographic Student Expeditions. It's a separate website. You can Google it. Then a few years after that, the New York Times came to us and said, hey, we love what you're doing, but we want to take our Pulitzer Prize winning editors, reporters, put students in places all over the world where we've been reporting for years, 
and get students excited about figuring out what's real and what's not real, how you write well, how you get both sides of a story, how you dig into the issues that often have many complex sides uh, in ways that will allow students to write better, really get to the facts, and have some of the best reporters and editors in the world critiquing your work and helping you to become a better uh, world citizen. So that's called New York Times Student Journeys. It has a separate website also, and those are pretty amazing programs as well. So to Putney, National Geographic Student Expeditions, and New York Times Student Journeys, if you can't find a great summer program out of those three categories, <laughs> there's something wrong. Absolutely. What incredible opportunities. They really are. Fantastic. Um, so can you tell me a little bit um, about Putney's uh, alum and if they choose to write about their, their experiences in their college applications, and if so, how, how they might do that? Sure. So listen, Natasha, I'm going to turn this one back to you in just a second because you're actually the <laughs> expert at A-List on how to, what, what students should write and how to get into college. Uh, I, I'm doing some teaching at Harvard now, and you know I've been traveling a lot in China talking about climate change and other issues. And, spreading the word about Putney and National Geographic and, and New York Times Student Journeys there because they've never heard of these programs. Mm -hmm. and, they, and many of them are bound for U.S. universities. And they all say to me, hey, uh, can, you, you know, can, can you get me into Harvard? How do I get into Harvard? And I keep saying to them, listen, don't do things because you want to get into a college, but there's no question that the kind of growth that colleges are looking for. I mean, let's, I always say to students, listen, reverse this thing for a second. Because we always think, how do I get in? How do I get into this college? How do I get into that college? The question we should all be asking is, what is that college looking for? And what I say to students is, listen, whether it's Harvard or anywhere else, colleges are looking for students who are well-rounded, who've had a variety of experiences, who've stretched themselves outside of their comfort zone, who've proven that they can exist and thrive outside of their family, outside of the things that they already know, their school and all that, that they're about more than just grades, test scores, and always, you know, uh, uh, doing well academically or trying to. So the answer, in my view, is yes, many students write their college essays about their Putney experiences, their Nat Geo experiences, their New York Times experiences. But what they don't want to see, frankly, is sort of the cliche, hey, you know, I went and did community service in Costa Rica, and I was so amazed to get there and find that people are a lot happier than we are. And so, you know, that was my experience, and I came back, and I want to write this essay about how all the good work that I did. That's probably not going to do it. It's too cliche. What they're really looking for is what you're about. What's in your soul? What drives you? What about an experience changed you and will make you a good participant and contributor to their college community? Don't forget, they're looking out for themselves too, as well as you mm -hmm. when they make an admissions decision. So we've had a lot of great essays written about uh, college essays, about Putney experiences, but the example is not usually the cliche. It's about something that happens something that you gain from this experience that changes you as an individual and therefore shows the college why you'd be a good contributor to them and different, frankly, than the big stack that they're trying to sit through that day to make a tough decision. Excellent. That's great. I couldn't have said it better than myself. Um, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> you tell us what you think makes a good college essay, and then I'll give you some examples of some from Putney. That would be great. That would be great. But um, tell me what you think, Natasha. What, what do you think the answer to that question? Because at A-List, you all actually know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I would I mean, you hit the nail on the head with avoiding the cliches, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of college admissions counselors get uh, essays about their admission trips and how it changed their lives. And and how they didn't realize that the people in, in Costa Rica were just as similar as them or whatever it might be. Right. Um, and you kind of want to avoid that cliche. Um, that doesn't mean you need to avoid speaking about your experience altogether, because I think there are clearly some um, moments that you can pull out from that experience that would highlight um, kind of how your mindset changed or how this experience really impacts you. Uh, the way I've seen it done most successfully is uh, focusing on a really specific moment, um, whether that be a conversation with someone that they had while they were on their trip, um, 
or uh, something specific. Like I had a student once write about his fanny pack that he wore for the length of his trip um, and what, what that meant for him as he traveled through, through Spain for the year right. or for the summer. Um, and so if you can zone in on something really specific that will set your essay apart from others. Um, and then you do need to get to the part where you talk about how that, you know, what that means, right? So what does it say about you? What does it say about who you will, what kind of student you'll be on campus? Uh, they're really trying to create a full picture of what kind of student you'll be once you get there and how this experience, because you went through this experience, because you were able to um, try something new, uh, what did you gain from that and how has it shaped who you'll, the type of student you'll be when you get to campus? Um, I just want to add on two additional ways that students can highlight their experiences. I think the obvious one is the activity list or the resume. So right. if seniors are at the point where they're filling out their Common App, they're going to want to include this as an, a summer program and the Common Application actually has uh, a category where it says, you know, summer program. Um, but I want students to really highlight the things that might not be obvious um, that they gained from that summer program. So don't just write that you did a program in Tanzania. Um, talk about the construction skills that you gained, um, that you now you're able to come back to the US and help your dad build the fence in the front yard, something like that. Um, and with resumes, you have a little bit more space to do that. But I'd encourage students to, to think beyond just the obvious. Um, college admissions officers are gonna know when you go on these trips um, what, what you're doing most likely. Um, so thinking about the unique experiences and skills that you've taken away, whether that be something like construction or maybe um, you know, uh, you've been able to improve your language skills through living with a host family. Um, those are the things that you definitely need to highlight. The last thing I'll Good say, stuff. yeah, is the um, additional recommendation letter. Uh, this one I think students don't often think of, but their program leaders, the Putney leaders or whoever's leading their program is going to have uh, insight into who they are in a very different way than a high school teacher or counselor. They're seeing them in uh, a completely different environment. Um, and so that could be someone that could be able to write an additional recommendation letter uh, because they can offer something that would be very different than your classroom teacher would be able to offer. Good point. I remember uh, a few years ago, we had a program, we had, we had a program and we still do, but program in Nepal. And we accepted a lot of students from around the country and we accepted one girl from mainland China. And she went to Beijing Experimental School. It's one of the really good schools in Beijing and really wanted to go to college in the United States. Anyway, she went on the program. Her leader, her female leader had gone to Dartmouth and really liked her, thought she was just a fantastic kid. One of the things that sort of went on with this kid is that she'd always sort of you know, been exposed to this sort of party line on um, Tibet from the Chinese, you know, what they teach you about, you know, sort of the history of Tibet. And then when she got me, meeting a lot of Tibetan people, she found that the story was actually pretty different from what she'd been told. So she wrote her, so her, when she, when the program was all over, her leader said to her, you've got to go to Dartmouth. You've got to go to Dartmouth. And she kind of like Dartmouth, you know, like she didn't know much about Dartmouth. Came over, visited, loved it. Her leader wrote her a recommendation, which is very common, uh, about why she'd be so great for Dartmouth. And she wrote her essay about this transformation of sort of having to figure out on her own as a result of a Putney experience that there were two stories to the, to the Tibet story. Now, the interesting thing was that her dad was pretty high up in the Chinese government. So she had to be pretty careful about how she navigated this. And I think the admissions committee just went, wow, this kid's got poise. She's really showing us what she's about. And I think that goes back to what you're saying, Natasha, which is, you know, not cliche, be who you really are. Um, I, I remember uh, another one, US-based, where, you know, because we get these, the alumni often send us their essays when they succeed in getting into a great school. And this one had gone on the trip you led to Spain. And it's kind of a neat story because uh, she, this was a girl who was a, not that strong a language student. She really wanted to learn Spanish and speak it better, but she was struggling. And we take a certain number of students who just aren't that fluent as long as they're motivated when they go or aren't that doing that great. So anyway, she really tried hard. She got a lot out of it. She started to speak Spanish. So she comes home from this experience. And she's going with her older sister up to upstate New York somewhere. And they're driving at like two in the morning. The car breaks down. 
and they're stranded in upstate New York. And they end up getting towed to this gas station where the only guy who's working at that hour to help get them going is a guy from El Salvador who doesn't speak a word of English. <laughs> and so suddenly she's there with her sister, her family. None of them can speak a word of Spanish except for she, who totally communicates with them, develops this great friendship with them, convinces them to fix the car, bails them out of this mess. <laughs> and she based her essay on not the fact that she'd been in Spain with Putney, just as you said, but on the fact that she had this new confidence to develop friendships with people all over the place because she can suddenly communicate in one of the most common languages in the world. And so it was kind of neat. You know, Skidmore grabbed her. She applied early and, uh, and it was a neat thing. So that's a fantastic example a, it is, yeah. about the program specifically, but how, you know, how that impact stays with you. Exactly. Once you're back. Yep. Excellent. And, uh, I mean, I could go on and on with their stories, but you get the point. It's not just as you said, Natasha, you don't write, you know, the essay isn't, I want to tell you what I did in Spain this summer. You know, mm -hmm. it's about your soul and how it changed you and your perspective on, on your life. And, and frankly, how that'll make you a better contributor to the college community that's considering you. That's just right. Exactly. Right. So. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those examples. Um, sure. I want to include some next steps for folks who might be interested in learning a little bit more about Putney. Um, so you can Great. see here. Yeah. If you, I don't know if there's anything else you want yeah. to include on this. <laughs> Listen, all I can tell you is um, call us or email us or uh, WeChat us or do whatever you choose to do. But we're going to actually be down in the New York area um, December 26th, I'm mean, sorry, January 26th and 27th, we go to alumni families, invite us to their homes, and we talk about our programs, invite people who are interested in, come visit us. If you just go to our website, there's a banner on the top that says, attend a presentation near you. And if you really want to meet one of us and get the in-depth view of the world with Putney or Nat Geo or New York Times, come to one of those presentations. Um, having said that, what do you do if you want to join up or you want to learn more? First of all, hit the website, get your questions answered. Our programs are pretty small and we have a selective enrichment process. So we try to, it's not like getting into Yale or whatever, but uh, we do thin out or we do uh, uh, turn away students who we feel emotionally have challenges that we're just not trained to deal with or who might have trouble working in a small group and really contributing a lot to it. Um, so it's pretty well-rounded, you know, well-adjusted students who are motivated and, you know, aren't looking for a team tour, you know, a, a bus tour around. They sort of see the sites, take pictures, hop back on the bus. That's not what we're about. Having said that, if it's something you really want to do, hit apply now. You'll see you apply online. Uh, you list two teachers that know you well at school or advisors that we then contact. You're right. If you have to write a short essay and then you're hopefully accepted. The only point I'm trying to make is it's a rolling admissions process. Our groups mm -hmm. are small. They tend to have waiting lists by April, May. So it depends. Some have some are full already, believe it or not. So if it's something you want to do, don't sit, you know, sit around and think about it till May. Get get rolling because space does get tight in all of these programs. Excellent. And I can't say enough about how much I love Putney. Clearly I'm still connected with them after a few years of leading. Um, it's a family company and I, I just, it's such a great experience. If you have the opportunity, you have to do it. Well, we uh, love you too. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit of information about A-List Education. Uh, we're based in Manhattan, but we work with clients and students across the country and internationally. Uh, we meet with students both in their homes, in our office and virtually. We offer both college advising and tutoring and test prep. Um, so the college advising is my area of expertise as a director of college advising. Um, and as we talked about tonight, the essays from these programs can be really important. Uh, we also help students plan out their summers. So helping them find programs like Putney and shaping that into their application. Uh, so there's a little bit more information about what we can offer there. And then of course we do SAT, ACT test prep as well as some academic tutoring in different subjects. If you're interested in learning more about A-List, uh, we have our uh, email listed down there. It's tutorteam at alisteducation.com and our phone number, give us a call. We'd be happy to chat, uh, whether it be summer planning or college advising uh, or tutoring. Thanks. Thanks, Natalie, for the work that you and A-List are doing because the college process I found with my daughters is so overwhelming 
to families and particularly to kids, it puts students and it puts so much tension in the family, I found. Uh, and, Frank, and, you know, what you do is sort of let the family off the hook. That's uh, exactly and, right. It's really true, you know, and so, instead of like the parents going, like, have you written your essay? What are you doing? Here? It's, you know, parents know that when they do a list, you've got an expert like you who's got it under control. They can go back to being parents, mm -hmm. let the students focus on the college thing and make the right choice and, and you give them all the advice. So it's a great service you're providing. Yeah, thank you. A lot of our families choose to work with us just for that reason, to remove that stress from the, from the relationship. We've been through it. Yeah, exa exactly. Um, I did just want to highlight, there's a Teen Summer Expo in New York. Uh, both Putney and A-List will have tables there. Um, I'll be there, and I know that Putney's sending a representative. Um, so stop by. We'd be happy to chat with you a little bit more about both Putney and A-List. Fantastic. Great. So I do want to open it up for um, some Q&A. I'm going to see, I'm going to first try to see if we can use the chat here, the chat feature. If that doesn't work, um, I can up, uh, unmute everyone, but I figure some people might be in some noisy area, so we'll try the chat here. Great. Um, and we'll take questions on any topic. Absolutely. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to ask. Um, let's see if this works, and if not, we can go to unmute. All right, no questions yet. I am going to try to unmute folks. If you are in a noisy area, you can just hit that mute button right away. Um, so it will, un or it will mute yourself again. Everyone is now unmuted. If you do have a question, just feel free to ask it out loud. All right, and maybe that we covered all the questions. We covered the bases. We covered it all. Um, I will say, you know, we have our contact information uh, listed. I'll go back to the slides. Um, if you do have a question, please feel to reach out. And I'm going to be sending all registrants uh, a recording of the webinar as well as our contact information um, moving forward. So you can be on the lookout for that in your inboxes tomorrow. Well, thanks, Natasha, for hosting this. This was great, Peter. Thanks so much for making the time. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Night. Bye.